Dead mm. Steen, our son. Please, lads. Thrills. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Little Carly Pilkington, little baldy mank, whinging little twat. How all are right. you? Yeah, all, right. all right, yeah. What are you doing? Happy? You been a bit happier today? You look as full of, full of spunk, as they say in America. Yeah, I'm all right. Just a bit of a miserable day, though, isn't it? Yeah. A bit miserable. Yeah. Uh, walking in today, <laughs> right? Uh, do you know I walked through, like, the, uh, sort of the gay district of, of London and that? Right. Well, you don't walk, you mince, don't you? I'm just just walking through on on the way to work, and I'm always interested in their their little shops and stuff that they have, right? Loads of <laughs> their yeah. little shops. That's no, no shame. If you, want, if you want to go in and buy something, go in and buy something. I'm just having a look at you know looking in the windows and stuff. Um, little postcard just near the near the entrance. Yeah. That's meant to tease people in to make people go. That sounds good. I'll nip in. Right. <laughs> little postcard. Free butt plugs <laughs> with every sale. <laughs> Right. How did we get from 5p off milk yeah. to free butt plugs with every sale? Wow. What society come to? Well, it's because we're liberated, Rick. Yeah. You know, it's an open society. What did you buy to get them? You didn't buy- oh, I didn't, I didn't uh, but what, what's the purpose? <laughs> what, of the poster or of butt plugs? Butt plugs, because I, I, I really honestly You don't... shove them up your ass, don't you? Woo, slow down, bum. Shove uh, them up your bum. Yeah. But, but when? Is that just like when you're doing whatever, doing stuff around the house or...? <laughs> I think it's, is it to kind of, it's not to keep things out. Is it like you would use a plug in the sink to keep, you know, the water in the sink? Oh, if you're not gay. <laughs> well, get that, oh yeah, no, I know what you mean, yeah. I don't know. No I mean, entry. What is, it, what is it? I mean, I don't understand what I don't know. It, I, I assume it either feels good or, or are they, <laughs> well, I've got to be careful here, or are they sort of like breaking it in? Right, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, like, it's like a shoehorn. Sure. <laughs> or, or, or yeah. you know, It's or like the... when you stick, uh, paper in your shoes if they're a bit uh, <laughs> yeah. tight. Or, or, um, or those people, those, um, people who sort of like put little bits of wood in their lips, sure. and then as soon they've got big plates in their lips. Yeah, yeah. Same yeah. as the butt plug. It means <laughs> you can, you know, yeah. you're ready for anything. I don't know, do I? <laughs> the Carl's face! <laughs> well, if you know what butt plugs are used for, then what <laughs> I get in touch. <laughs> Ricky Dr. Blaze, exit.com.uk. What do you think? If there's any- I can't th believe we're already on this subject. How I know. Is it? It's I know. One and we're I, know. I was, I was gonna, I was gonna say then, if there's any people who use butt plugs, and, and I was thinking that Carl would have said, well they're, they're not up yet. Yeah. Because they go out late. No, but- But what? Is it, we're award winning people, we've, we've yes. written a TV Not on show, radio though. Respected. Not on radio, we're rubbish on radio. I know, but we've what? got nothing to lose. But I always say to you, Steve, that I like educating people and that. Now, the way I say it, see it is, I didn't know what they were. Mm. Um, Let's phone to go. Tell them what now about butt plugs. All right, we'll, we'll get no, to no, them. No, no, get them on. Get them on. Get, ask them. No, because they might say something dodgy. Oh! But, yeah, whereas, <laughs> yeah, what have we yeah, just yeah. been doing? Just take a chance. Take a chance and tell them not to swear. Well, do you tell them? Okay. Right, Steve, do you oh, want I've got my headphones on. Hello, who's there? Oh, my name, hold on. Who, sorry? Nicholas. Nicholas, hello, mate. Uh, you're not going to swear, are you? No, I'm not going to swear. Keep it clean. I yeah. Will. Keep them keen. Um, what, uh, what, what were you calling about? I'm phoning about your plugs. About, pl m well, not my plugs, but sure, plugs in general. <laughs> what, uh, do you know much about them? No, Are you a plug I'm user yourself? No, I'm just thinking if maybe you've got some gay friends and you're spending the night at their place, you might want to use one. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> what, you mean experiment with them, or? No, so you can make sure they're not going to do anything while you're asleep. Do you, can, right. I, can I suggest, can I suggest, uh, you know, just lock the door? I mean, <laughs> that is easier to can me. I, can I make a bigger suggestion? <laughs> That's probably the most homophobic thing we've had said on the show today. <laughs> Thanks very much for your call. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. good. Well, that's why we shouldn't put people on the line. <laughs> just, you know, without checking first. I think Carl's made a good point. That's the caliber of listener we've got. <laughs> God gave rock and roll to ya by Kiss on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. I'm bloody edge. glad he did, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, I am. Cheers. Carl Pilkington's with us as well. He's learnt some stuff while uh, the song's been on. He's had a couple of calls. One from a bloke, one from a woman who worked in a sex shop, and you learnt quite a lot. I can see your eyes widening. What have you learnt then about butt plugs? I haven't really learnt anything. I don't. I still don't understand. Yes, this. you have. 
No, but she's just, the woman was just saying, you know, it spices things up a bit. Yeah. Well, what do you need to do that for? The end result is always the same, I think. <laughs> so why complicate it? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Are you with me, though? These people who say, you know, they do stuff all night, it's like, what's the point? That's why I like short stories and that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brilliant. So. Excellent. If, I wish people could see what he looks like when he's talking yeah. about it. Oh, in fact, he's in heat next week, Steve. Right. Um, is he? Yeah, yeah, they put a picture of him. They could do the grab off the, the DVD mm -hmm. and he's behind the scenes and uh, he's got his little picture in heat and he right. hates it, don't you? Well, I'm a bit annoyed because I didn't want it in. <laughs> Why are you worried? Just don't want people knowing, knowing what, what like. I look like and that. Why? Were you on the DVD? Yeah, but. It's to public domain. Anyone can take it off there and put it on the paper now. But I, but that's extras on a DVD, and I'm just thinking not that many people. If they watch it, they won't take it in and stuff like that. What are you worried about then? Just I don't. There's like me brother and sister and stuff who I don't see anymore. If they know what I look like now, they might. What do you mean if they know what you look like now? They've just got to imagine little Carl Pilkington with no hair. No, I've I've changed quite a lot because I work hard, don't I? So I've aged quite badly. Right. <laughs> and I'm just thinking if they- You still have the hair of a Chinaman, But yeah. sorry, why- why is it a problem for your brother and sister to see you and to Cos I don't see them anymore, do I? And they'll come out of the woodwork now. What, what, what? They're after what? your millions. No, no, so they're sitting at home, they're looking at heat, and there goes Carl and goes, oh, Carl's my brother. My brother, my brother, right? Oh, maybe I'll go and see him. I don't- I don't want the hassle. But they could find out where you are What's hassle? What's the hassle then? It's just hassle of- Having friends and family and that. <laughs> you mean this, don't you? Yeah, is that you know that I'm not not into be you know having. But if either that. your brother or your sister came to your door, would you not welcome in it? Welcome them in and give them a cup of tea. Do you know what? He bumped into his sister right after about seven years in a car park somewhere, right? And she went, "Oh, I got a picture of my my new kid. Do you want to see it?" He went, "Not really. All kids look the same." And she went off in half. Unbelievable. Yeah, but that's the problem though, isn't it? She she hadn't seen me for years and years. That's the way I am. I'm not like being rude or anything. I'm just says what comes in me head. Oh, don't give me that. Don't do that. I'm not rude. It's what comes in me head. That's a rubbish excuse. Not know me, know my ways. Mm. Yeah. Right. I'm wrong then. Let's look at it. Let's look at the. What hey, I said. there's now Obama's cakes. Know <laughs> me, know my ways. Get out, you twiddle flunt. <laughs> what is that? What sort of philosophy is that? Know me, I'm rude, and take it or leave it. I'm not it. being rude. You what? are being rude. What, saying that all babies look the same? It's your nephew! You didn't even bother to have a look, you could have been courteous yeah, and had a look at the picture. If it was a first, I'd say fair enough, but she's got loads of kids. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> what kind of woman is she? <laughs> David Bowie, Lady Stardust from Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. I went to see him Tuesday. I know you went to see him Wednesday, Steve. Mm. I mean, obviously I'm a mental fan, but I think objectively that was one of the best shows I've ever seen. Yeah, it was brilliant. He's got the best band in the world. He, it, it, he played all the hits. It was an amazing show. The sound was incredible. He. I mean, do you know what I mean? Well, his just voice as well. I think people don't realise how incredible his voice is. It was absolutely Soulful is the word I'd use. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It was absolutely brilliant. You don't, don't give it. You don't care, do you, Carl? We don't care about this. You never really good. go to gigs, do you, Carl? You know, the live music experience is not something you enjoy. Uh, can be all right. I mean, I heard, go on. I heard that someone else who went to the Bowie thing said that he sort of messed with the songs a bit, which would annoy me. No, he didn't. Not really. Hardly said, at all. He said when they did um, Life on Mars, instead of saying something about uh, just just the tune of it, he messed with it so it wasn't the same. That that would annoy me. What would you well, do? Well, well, but I mean, we're not oh. we're not talking Bob Dylan or Sinatra. He it's the, he ad libbed a little bit, I suppose, and it's his song. But it was t you know totally faithful. It was he was singing the songs. What do you yeah. mean? Well, it's just don't don't mess with stuff. It's like if you went to see Titanic. And then the boat didn't have a crash. You go, what? What are they doing? It's like, oh, I fancy messing with it. Well, he didn't. I mean, well, I tell you, I tell you, he didn't mess with it. Relatively speaking, he did not mess with the songs. They were brilliant renditions. That would oh. be a hell of a film, though, where Titanic <laughs> gets to New York. <laughs> Absolutely fine. 
<laughs> oh, Carl. But, uh, oh, you're amazing. It's because I work here, though, and there's a lot of gigs going on all the time, and then you get to a point when, you know, you just go, oh, get a bit fed up with that. Well, I mean. well, when was the last time you went to a live experience? Uh... Well, I've, I've been to gigs, but the one that springs to mind probably is when I first sort of tried a gig out, and it wasn't a music one, it was, um, it was Bottom, you know, with... <laughs> <laughs> bottom, what, Bottom the Live thing with... With Rick Mayer and Eggman. Yeah, in Manchester. When was that? Years ago, because it was, it was in, in Manchester in about, I don't know, 87, 88 or something, and, uh, I was set up for a, for like a blind date. Right, this, uh, a mate of mine sort of set me up to see this, see this What, girl. so you said, let's go to bottom? Well, I didn't tell her, I just said, meet us at the Apollo. Uh, I bet she was over the moon, wasn't she? Met her there, said, right. Romantic? Go. Going to see some middle-aged men run round in pants. Brilliant. Well, it, it, it's good, it's one of the things that afterwards you've got something to talk about, haven't you, and stuff. Yeah. So it was, like, uh, was it a good gig? Yeah, it was alright, uh, sort of bought some... Bought some opal fruits and that at the start of the night. Yeah. Uh, I think she liked that. And then we watched Bottom. Then afterwards had a bit of a chat and then, uh... You didn't see her again, I take it? I would have done right, because she was alright looking and everything. Yeah. But when <laughs> we were, when we were chatting, she said, uh, she had a, a problem with a marrow. Marrow what? and that. <laughs> she what? She had a problem with a marrow. She had a problem with her marrow? Yeah. Uh, you mean her bone marrow? Yeah. Oh! I thought you meant she had one stuck of her fanny. No, just, just a... <laughs> Thanks for that, Rick. That's an image I take <laughs> out of my head. <laughs> no, when did what? Oh, I see. A marrow. I think a marrow. A marrow. Her marrow. And is, is that serious, that? Well, see, I just was put off it, because I thought... If you well, start... I, I think it's more serious than a problem with a marrow. Yeah, I mean... A with a marrow. With a marrow and that. <laughs> it's an idea if you're bored with... But I that's... love it! It's, I love it! Everything he says is like someone from Kez. It was just that thing that You didn't want to go out with a girl who might be ill in some way. Well, yeah, I thought, what's the point in spending time with her, spending money on her and stuff, and then she's gonna die on me. Oh! Right? No, 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 but seriously. God! No, but I'm just- but, see, this is what annoys me. Oh. You asked me to be honest, oh. but I'm just saying, what's the point in me getting upset and stuff? Oh, no, but it's not the- it was the- the one thing is then what's the point in spending money on her if she's gonna die anyway? Do you gotta realise no, that's no. not a normal thing to say! No, but what's the point in getting to really like to know- you know, knowing someone and thinking, oh, that she's really nice, I want to spend my life with her. It's good that she told me when she did. Oh, Carl! Oh, what, during bottom? <laughs> I got- this is the most amazing thing you've ever said! What Steve, do you don't you- don't you understand what I'm saying? But no, because- what? Well, firstly, it's the assumption that she's going to drop dead, and well, you're going to think, "Let's door some open fruits." I'm not a doctor. I don't know what 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 it means when you've got a problem with a marrow and that. But she looked pretty serious when she was talking about it. So I was like, "Oh, <laughs> Christ Almighty!" I don't want to sound what's so bad about it. Play a record. I'll tell you. I'll explain to her during the break. Play a record. Libertines. Yeah. If you're morally objectionable, why not email <laughs> ricky.jvates at xfm.co.uk? It's okay, he's an idiot. True. Modest Chambers, Kings of Leon on XFM, 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Steve, yes. I want to talk to you. Uh, I think it was, uh, might have been Wednesday night, I was uh, in the pub, phone goes, a car goes, you're watching that thing about parasites. Right. I went, no, I'm out, he went, oh, fellow with a maggot in his head. Fellow with a maggot in his head? Yeah. And he goes, oh, no, he's pulling it out now, oh, oh, God. I said, well, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I get it, I get it. I said, yeah, see you later. About five minutes later, I get a message on my phone, beep, beep, I look at it, it just says, oh no, there's a fella with his fish up his cock now. There's a fella with a fish up his cock? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Do you want to explain that, Carl? Is it one of those little ones that swim up if you're having a slash in the Amazon? Yeah. Yeah. That's weird, isn't it? But it was, it was st like, stuff like that, it started off with, uh... What does the fish do when it gets in there? Just sits there. <laughs> why is it? Why? Well, what else can it do? No, but why does it go up there? 
Uh, don't know. I didn't listen to that bit. There's a bit. There's a bit. He uh, started off with a fella who uh, had a bit of meat and got a tapeworm inside him. Yeah. And he grew it for however long, and it came out at the end. It was like about seven foot long. On purpose. Yeah, he did it on purpose. Yeah, for the for the program. Right. I think. It, yeah. Probably slimming, isn't it? Well, I was thinking that. <laughs> could you know? I mean, you're a fan of Waller. Could he? Purposely have about eight of them. <laughs> what Rick Waller? Yeah, it's a good idea. Because because they were saying how they, they eat, you know, a lot of stuff when they're in you. They just eat. All well, they of take they take enough so you don't die, and nor do they. Yeah, but I mean you've got to keep taking them out, haven't you? Because you'll still have the same weight because it's got to go somewhere. So you'll have them in you. You what you got to do is like let them eat your meal and then take them out. Do you think worm watchers will ca <laughs> catch on? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so that happened, right? And then, uh, yeah, there was a woman with a with a maggot in her head. A woman with a maggot in yeah, her head. Yeah, just she went on holiday, it got in there somehow, and uh, <laughs> stow away. It just, just, oh, it was it was massive. And the thing is, it, she had a hole in her head, and she's there being interviewed with the doctor, like, and you can see it just sort of sticking its head out. Like, do you know when you see a cartoon with a a maggot in an apple? Yeah. And it looks out, and looks around like that. Yeah. Why didn't they just take it out there and then? I think they could have done, but the doctor's messing about. It's like, well, it's good for the show, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and they left it in there. Right, that's libelous. Well, that is libelous. But I found it weird. Why not just grab it? Because <laughs> there must be a reason. There must be one of those medical reasons that you don't really know about, Carl. Right. And another bit. This this was the best one. Right? <laughs> grab it. Right. There's this fella, <laughs> and he was uh, he was he was on his bike, right, yeah. cycling, cycling to work or whatever, and. Uh, he sort of sees this thing in the corner of his eye. Right? Literally in the corner of his eye. Or you mean he, he saw something? He just said he saw something. He saw something okay, and yeah. thought, what's that? Yeah. So he thought, oh, doesn't matter, whatever. And he, uh, he stops off at a cafe, right, yeah. get a little, uh, little scone, the tea or whatever. <laughs> and he goes in there, and he's, he's sat down, and the waiter comes over, he says, uh, yeah, what do you want? He says, I'll have a scone and a tea. He goes, alright then. So he goes to get it, comes back, as he puts the tea and the scone down, his face is like, what, what is that, right? Like a look of frightenedness on yeah. his face, <laughs> right? Drops the tea and legs it. So the fella's going, what, what, what? So he legs it after the bloke and goes, what? And he says, oh, something came out of your nose. That was massive. <laughs> 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 Sorry, something came out of the guy's It's all true because people would have watched it, so don't start saying Sorry, it didn't happen. Sorry, but I just need to clarify. The guy I on the don't, bike. I don't believe he ran away. Wait, I don't it? believe he legged it. I oh. don't we have, I don't believe he had a look of frightenedness <laughs> on his face. And I don't believe he said something massive came out your nose. <laughs> Wait and, a and I don't even believe he had a cup of tea and a scone. <laughs> These are the things that I think are embellished. <laughs> I don't. But who had something coming out of his nose? Was it the guy serving the scone? The one who was on the bike who, who ordered the scone. Yeah, but what it was came it? came out of his nose. Yeah, what was it came out of his nose? Right, so he goes home. <laughs> And he thinks, I've got to sort this out because it's not good and that, so he's But what? No, it was out of his nose. What, so you mean it poked out of his nose, it didn't come out. <laughs> it just said hello and then it- It was like the maggot in the head. Yeah, yeah. He just yeah. popped, just, popped just... his head out, had a look around and went back in. Why did like... the bloke- Why did the bloke <laughs> drop the tea and run? Well, it's, it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, so- So he goes home. He goes yeah. home and he goes, oh god, you know. So he sits in front of the mirror and he's sat there waiting. <laughs> this thing comes out. Uh, again, sort of looks round, goes back in again, so he goes, oh. <laughs> no scones. Right? <laughs> no, he's just, so he goes, I've got to sort this out. He goes to the doctors, yeah. says to the doctor, I've got something up my nose, it just keeps coming out and having a look round, going back in. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't so say that. The doctors, so the doctor's like, oh, I haven't heard of that before. Right? <laughs> Didn't say that. So, <laughs> so sat there, it does it again, the doctor looks, you know, frightened again. He runs away? Yeah. He had a look of fr medical frightenedness. <laughs> yeah. He dropped his stethoscope and he, legged it. No, he <laughs> said, he said, I know what it was. So what? what? So you got a leech up your nose. He had a leech about that long. What's radio? Well, how long's that? Four inches. Four inches coming out of his nose. <sighs> Next time it stuck its head out, he grabbed it, pulled it out. That's horrible though, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Can I just remind people, <laughs> uh, just let people know, when Carl was saying, it was about that long, and Ricky said four inches. He was using his fingers. Oh yeah, he didn't have his no was something else. The feather out, no. So he had a leech up his nose. How did he get a leech up his nose? I don't know, again, <sighs> just, I'm not that bothered about that bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
got all the footage and stuff. <laughs> oh, player records. program. Yeah. It's just the same. He just sees that. He gets fast. He doesn't read on. Mm. His education is just sound bites, bites and uh, self embellishment in his own head. Yeah. It's like he gets he gets all his news from Ananova and he just reads mm. the headline. Yeah. Oh. And and he just doesn't bother reading it. it, it but you know he he considers that education. He well, gets annoyed if you think that you, more information so you is useful. don't get going on that, cause oh, we'll talk about that later. If you I'll tell you what, go. right, okay, uh, after, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna play a song now, and, um, I'm gonna tell London Carl's confusion over evolution. Right. Are you two? Oh, brilliant. The sweetest thing on XFM, uh, Ricky Gervais, Steve Mitch, and Carl Pilkington. So, we're with Carl in the week. So, well, what can we could do this week? I was saying, well, don't do Rockbusters, that's dead in the water. I hope the, uh, I hope the listening public agree with me. Um, he's going, well, you know, why don't I teach stuff again? Remember what I taught you last week? I went, no, no idea. Were well, you joking? I went, no. Um, and it was, he went, Ivan the Terrible, goes like a fella's eyes. Yeah. He actually said Ivan the Terrible at the time. Yeah. So... I can't remember. This was a man who had built yeah. something for Ivan the Terrible and then But, but, but his idea of education is telling someone something that knows more about the subject than him so they can correct him when yeah. he's telling them it. And, uh, so I said, well, I don't know... Uh, uh, and he gets annoyed that me and you are dubious against monkeys who perform bank robberies. And he goes, but you leave... but you believe in Newton. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't know the difference. I was trying to explain the laws of the universe, yeah. right? It was going, what, what do you do? And so all I come up with, I, some, I thought something interesting. You know when you ch tell a child maths, you say you've got three potatoes and you've got four potatoes? Yeah. I have to do that with science to Carl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I ended up saying, imagine you're in a shopping trolley with loads of house bricks. If you throw the house bricks out, you'll go the other way. He loved that. Right. He upped, didn't you? Hmm. Because I didn't know that that, that would happen. And... It's sort of useful to know. It sort of explained a bit to me and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right? And that's that's why I like doing stuff every week. I think listeners go away going, well, I didn't know that. Do you know what I mean? Carl, Carl told me something there. They forget it instantly, just like we do. They We're don't. friends of yours and we forget it instantly. No, the annoying thing with you is, Steve, not so much, Ricky, at least they'll listen now and again, you'll just dismiss stuff straight away. <laughs> I told Carl, you loads of stuff yesterday, I told you loads of stuff. But Carl, what you consider education... <laughs> what, what, you well, hang on, what you consider education, I consider tittle-tattle. Well, it's not education. Do you know what I mean? You seem to think it's education. It's just kind of gossip stories you've sort of half read. Right. All right. Example of yesterday: goldfish have longer memories than people think they do. Yeah. You, you said no. It's, uh, it's rubbish. No, we didn't. We no, said we're going to have information from. Really. Yeah. It's not, there's not enough information there for it to be educational mm. because you. What you because it's also relative. Because know. because the, because that as a statement, it has no objectivity. Uh, goldfish's memories are longer than some people think. That isn't a fact. Because <laughs> exactly. we don't know how how long do people think a goldfish's memory is. Do you see what that isn't a fact? Whereas law and uh, uh, Newton's uh, laws of physics and the universe right, are. Right. Yeah, but it was just just a little thing. Um, and I taught you more than that. I said I said about there's loads of Chinese people. If you put them in a line, you can't get to the end of it. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. There's there's loads of Chinese people. We know that. But what? If we put them in a the line, we can't get to the end but of it. If we just, just say there's about a billion you know, Chinese people in the world. But what really annoys me is, right, I read something on the internet the other day, because I'm always trying to learn stuff. Yeah, no you are, I know you are. Right? Yeah. And you're having a go at me because you're saying, well, what does that mean? Yeah, there was a report on, I think it was Ananova or BBC News website, it said, the world may end in 32 million years. Right, first of all it says may, it doesn't say it will, and yeah. 32 million, who's going to argue with that? And yet they, they're allowed to put that on a website, you, you're not having to go at them. No, but But Carl, you didn't read on. A, there's more information. It wasn't like, that, wasn't a, that wasn't meant to be a newsflash to worry people. That was like, that was like, oh, scientists have discovered that possibility there. That was just like... Yeah, but again, possibility. No, but Carl, yeah, but there's, there's, there's other paragraphs that you haven't read. You see, that'll have to give explanations as to why to, they think that might happen. So therefore it becomes a news item, it becomes educational. It's not just the headline, the bullet point, the head, you know the headline's just supposed to, it's supposed to draw you into the story so you read on. Yeah. That's not all I the information. But then I was trying to come up with things to, um, to excite you and I realised that I was, 
opening a can of worms. Um, I, I was trying to come up with facts for him. He's going, well, give me facts. So I said, um, I said, oh, okay, uh, uh why can't an owl, uh, why does an owl have to turn its sort of head 180 degrees? And I said, it's because the eyes are so large, as we have a huge focal point for its sight, that it, they can't move within the skull, right? And he went, well, why'd they do that? Why don't they just do it, give them normal eyes, and let, and then after I've turned their head, I went, what do you mean? Why didn't that? He went, well, whoever did that? I went, well, it was evolution. It was, uh, he went, right. He went, he went, it's like giraffes. I read that giraffes grew their necks to eat food. I said, well, they didn't, they didn't grow their necks to get the food. Uh, the ones that uh, had upshots lived longer and so got the food and passed on their, he went, yeah, but why didn't they just give them wings? I went, why didn't who just give them wings? He got angry and went, whoever gave them the necks! <laughs> <laughs> his, his understanding of evolution made me fall on the floor. Who do you imagine is there? Because you don't believe in God, do you? So who is it you imagine is they? Well, whoever made us sorted us out. <laughs> <laughs> who? I don't uh, know, it just happens, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Well, there's no, listen, there's I, no will to evolution. It's I, natural selection, I isn't it? I still don't get it, though. We talked about an hour about, about an hour, didn't we? I know. I yeah, but to be I fair, I watched as Ricky tried to give you actually what was quite a concise and educated version of uh, evolution. He tried to explain it to you, and I have never seen a person lose interest quicker. But I used, I, I tried to use, uh, actual fact, then I tried to use metaphor and analogy, then I showed you some computer programs to show what biofeedback is and everything. I tried all these things, and Steve's right, uh, you were looking out the window. Have you ever spoken, Carl, to someone who's got Alzheimer's disease? <laughs> And you try to explain who you are, and they're listening, and then they, that's no. what you're like. It's extraordinary. But listen, seriously, I went home, I found this book, I found a couple of facts which I think are more up your street. Evolution, a little bit complicated, a little bit big. But this one, I think, I think we may have mentioned it before, I think you're like this. This is from a book of facts and trivia. The Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. Yeah. That's interesting to you, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Have you got any more there? I'll see if I can find Oh, he's interested. Know. Yeah. Can exactly. get the staff. That did you, happen, you, yeah? You pay peanuts, that definitely happened, you get yeah. monkeys. <laughs> and then what did they go off and do after that? Well, it doesn't say- so I love the fact that he thinks- right, okay, so in <laughs> his mind, <laughs> if now the monkey going, it's 5.30, I'm off, you, you know I was going early today, and they go off maybe dancing or something, or they come in late. No, I think he- th I think he- what I, I assumed what you meant there is that that was their first career move. And yeah, then they well, went it, on. It's yeah. like actors waiting to be discovered. <laughs> play a record. Uh, just one more before you play a record. Oh, man. You're like this. Peter the Great. You ever heard of Peter the Great? No. Okay, well, anyway, Peter the Great had his wife's lover oh. executed. You'll love this, Carl. Right, so he, he, his wife had a lover. He had him executed, and he put his head into a jar of alcohol, and his wife had to keep it in her bedroom. Do you understand? That's every time she saw, every morning she'd wake up, and there was her lover's head who, in a jar. Who took his head off? He took. He took his own head off. <laughs> Play a record. Play a record. <laughs> she had a lover. And, oh, never Forget mind. It. Never Forget mind. It. <laughs> Mad World on XFM. We just had a <laughs> we just had a text, Rick, from Andrew Barnes. He says he did he watched the same documentary. It would appear yeah. as Rick Carl did in the week. And he says here, just to clarify, the leech nose man got it up there when drinking from a muddy stream. Uh, and he goes on. One can only imagine the frightenedness he experienced. <laughs> oh, oh God! <laughs> Ex explain to him once more to what, what what happened with Peter the Great. All right. So we've got Peter the Great. Yeah. Okay. And his wife. Had a lover. That's another site. man. Another man. Not uh, Peter the Great. She, she was having an affair with someone else. Right. And Peter the Great, he found out about that. Okay. Yeah. So he sliced off this bloke's head. He killed him. He executed him. Right. You, you, you with me so far? The, the fella who, who oh, she was- Oh, Jesus. She was seen for a bit. Yeah, there's only two fellas involved There's two there, people though, involved. Yeah. One's Peter the Great, the other one's right, not. Right. The guy that's not Peter the Great- Derek, Derek the, the, <laughs> Derek the <laughs> Terrible. Derek the Rubbish. Yeah. Right? He's having an affair with Peter the Great's missus. So Peter the Great slices off his head, puts it inside a jar of alcohol to preserve it, and puts it in his wife's bedroom. So every morning she wakes up, she sees her dead lover's head. You, you'd have thought he wouldn't have wanted to remember, wouldn't you? Oh. Best put, bury the head so she can't, don't remember. Well, it was a reminder so as not to put it about. <laughs> and did it work? <laughs> oh, I don't know! I love that. Again, <laughs> that to me is an amazing thing to do. And you go, did it work? <laughs> I mean, you've got quite an interesting mind, actually. I mean, you are, in some ways, 
really, really bright and intelligent. I, I love the way you think. Uh, you're one of the cleverest blokes in some ways that I know. Dad always says I've got common sense. Well, yeah, and that's that's more important than knowing about you know. Gold but it's fishing it's up. what it, it, you really you. It's like you follow the subplot, which is quite an interesting thing. Do you know what I mean? It's like. I, you tell you a story, you'll always pick up on something that I didn't even think was an important bit. It's like you're always, you're, you're looking out of the window all the time. So what's important about that head thing? The, what do the, you mean? The head in the jar, what's, so it's what a should I be? It's a grotesque thing to do. It's, it, it, it shows, yeah, um, ego, power, cruelty, and revenge. Although I think it probably did work, because he is called Peter the Great. Yeah. So you'd assume he got, he got it right. Yeah. I don't see how you can query that. That's the sort of facts you give us. You see now, you're on the other side of the fence, and you've got questions, just like we've always got questions. No, but in Carl's thing, it would have been, turns out, some weird happened, right, and he was still alive. <laughs> yeah. And so she was still having sex with body, and yeah. his head was watching. Yeah. And Peter the Great didn't even know. Oh, see how I, he's perked I, I understand, up? I understand what, what you're saying. Now, I've learned some other stuff. So we'll, I'll, I'll see if I can, you know, educate you a bit before three. But I want to know, to see what, I'll tell you what education I want. I want to know what sort of things I can buy this weekend. Butt plugs. No. Have you got any adverts? Oh, yeah. Excellent. It's my life and no doubt on XFM, the yeah. version of the Talk Talk Love song. It. Love it. You've enjoyed that, Rip. Yeah, on XFM 104.9. Right, Carl. This is where he shines. This is where Carl gets- this is what Carl gets Mondays off for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, Carl, what is it? You wanna explain this? It's the bit when, uh, I'm in a film and, uh, sort of edit me into it so I'm like an actor in a major film. Yeah. We've done Kez, we've done One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Shining, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, this week, it's A Few Good Men. Brilliant okay. film. Brilliant with, film. With, uh, Jack Nicholson and that. Yeah. Uh, so you listen to this, and, uh, will we give the question later on? We'll probably... No, let's give it after this. All right. Yeah, we'll give it after the we've All right. clip. Uh, I haven't really got one sorted, but I'll think of one whilst it's on. <laughs> so, uh, have a listen to this, take everything in, and yeah. then the question at the end. So yeah. it's a scene where it's a court case. Yeah. All right? All right. A few All good rise! Call your witness. <clears throat> yeah, he's, he's just coming now. All right, Jack. Colonel. What? I'd appreciate if he would dress me as Colonel or Sir. I believe I've earned it. Defense counsel will address the witness as Colonel or Sir. All right. All right, Colonel. A bit smart today with all the uh, all the army stuff on. You ever served in an infantry unit, son? Nah. Brother did. He was uh, he was in the army. Got kicked out though, cause cause he uh, he went for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> Weird that, isn't it? No, it's not. It's tragic. Mm. I'll say it's tragic. I'll show you something tragic. I always um, carry this book around with me. I always show it to people. It's got like uh, the top. 50 weird people in the world in it, right? It's all sorts of weird stuff in it. Uh, look at this one here. It's a fella, right? He's got two heads. And the weird thing is, right, is the top 50 weird people in the world. He's at number 50, he's got two heads, right? Makes you wonder what's going to be at number one, doesn't it? Are these really the questions that I was called here to answer? No, but look at it. Imagine if you were his mate. You wouldn't get a word in edgeways, would you? If you Maybe he didn't have any friends. Mm, probably right, they say, don't they? They say two's company, three's a crowd, so... Please tell me that you have something more, Lieutenant. Yeah, I've got loads more. For this fella at number 36, look at him. Three legs. Little fellow with three legs, right? Guess what his job is? My answer is I don't have the first damn clue. Well, I'll tell you. He's a juggler. I beg your pardon? He's a juggler. This is ridiculous. I know it's ridiculous. You're probably thinking what I'm thinking. Why wasn't he a footballer? A great at keep you up, isn't that? Wasn't he? I'll answer the question. You want answers? Yeah, it's just, it's just that I'd like to know the truth. Behind. You can't handle the truth, gentlemen. Well, I've paid for the book, so I think I'm entitled to know why. I don't did. give a damn what you think you are entitled to. You better get somewhere fast with this, Lieutenant. 
What about this one then? This lad here, he's 12 years old, he looks 48. What do, what do you think? No. Why not though? You, you said you didn't want to know any more about the juggler. You didn't say you didn't want I to know, know any more I about I know what I said. The... I don't have to have it read back to me like All I... right. Lieutenant, do you have anything further for this witness? Well, I just wanted to know if you thought Mr. Webfoot at number 42 should have took up swimming, but... Absolutely. And you'd say that now, wouldn't you? Forget it. Uh, well, I, mean, I don't know what to say, really. That's Carl Pilkinson in the uh, film A Few Good Men with Jack Nicholson, acting alongside Jack, and I have to say, giving him a run for his money. I think Carl is a really good actor. Mm. I genuinely think that. Should we put him in summer? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Okay. Right, what's the question? What's, the, what's his forte, do you think? Just sort of, uh, playing that sort of stuff. <laughs> okay. Sort of deep stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so we can sort that out. Think of a question there, out of that little lot. Um, you, you've not got one? Uh, well, well, I've got, what, what, um, who was at number 36, whatever it was. What was it? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's... Who was at number 50? Who was at number 50? Yeah, all right then. Okay. Yeah, who was number, who, what? Yeah. Well, yeah, what was odd about the guy who was at number 50 in the 50 in the weirdest people mm. on the list? And just text in, uh, 83XFM and put your address on there as well and that. What prizes are there, Carl? Uh, loads of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. oh, that's actually not bad. There's, um, Lord of the Rings on there, Michael Palin's Around the World in 80 Days. If you've not had a chance to see that yet, it's been repeated about 80 times. <laughs> um, <laughs> Look Around You, which is an excellent show. That's yeah, really funny brilliant. Yeah, uh, there's some other good, so that's not too bad, and also the, um, relatively poor stand-up DVD, Ricky Gervais's live animal <laughs> show, which is, uh, <laughs> mediocre. Can't give him away. Yeah. All right. And, uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can win all those pr prizes. If you can answer, which question again? Who, uh, who was the fella who was at number 50 in my book? What was up right. with him? Excellent. All right, so let's, uh, got to play, uh... Thorns. And thorns, yeah. That's the most beautiful track I I've been, I, I can't get enough of this. There's no, you'll love it. You'll love this. Oh, come on, what's the matter with you? What? Thorns. That's no, no blue sky. Beautiful, isn't it? Could and that you... great track. It's alright, yeah. Just had an email, yeah. That woman who opened the office script could have her head cut off, apparently. When a letter is posted, it becomes the property of the Queen until it reaches the person it was meant for. By opening it, she's committed treason and could be killed. I don't know if you're familiar with this story, Carl, are you? Go on. Apparently, uh... Some copies of the Office Christmas specials, scripts, got sent to the wrong address, some woman, and, uh, instead, I mean, I don't know what you do in that situation. Normally, if I get mail that's not addressed to me, I just put it, give it to the postman or put it back in the postbox. Radio One tried to speak to her, but apparently, um, she's got a gag in order, which makes us think that she sold it to the Sunday, so oh, we'll right. we read it. we we'll read the plot yeah. of The Office tomorrow yeah. in the Sunday papers, which, uh, ruin it for some people. Ruin it for a lot of people, yeah. But the other thing is... Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, if it was sent to her, obviously her name wasn't on it. Oh. If that's if that's true, in which case, I think that's quite a serious offence, isn't it? I, I, mean, would, I would hope so. I mean, I would hope that yeah, if I but, sent something in an envelope, it was. But the BBC oh, Ash actually, the BBC thinks that because the person it, they said it was meant to be sent to got his, he thinks maybe that's an excuse. Maybe someone gave her the script and said, "Don't tell her it. Don't say it came from me." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I don't know, maybe she's protected someone, I don't know. Yeah, well, I I mean, if, if that is Well, either way, either way, don't sell it to a newspaper. Well, I, yeah. It's just, it's just the kind of mercenary nature of it that I loathe, you know? It's the fact that, and the fact that it's only just now it makes me wonder if she had it there lying around in, the off, in, in her house and someone said to her, well, why don't you go to the papers? Yeah. Try and flog it. But I just don't think it's, I don't think she's going to get a lot for it, because people are going to see it soon. It's not like it's the hit the diaries. Well, they're not mean? very well written. <laughs> but, I mean... I don't know. I don't know. I don't tell you what I'm frustrated by, it's just the fact that it's like we've worked hard to give people some kind of pleasure for this Christmas, you know, because a lot of people are very depressed, Rick, very yeah. low at this time of year, they've not got what they wanted. But We're trying to cheer them up, give them a bit of happiness. Yeah, but I think she'll be happy if she gets a lot of money. True, true. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's just tacky, really. It's like, well, I just say, if you're a fan of the show and you don't want to know what happens, then don't read the Sundays tomorrow, or at least avoid it when it says we tell you what The papers might not ruin it, the papers might go... We've got them, but we're not going to ruin it for people. Well, that'd that be a would nice, be, ideal. be a nice gesture. But uh, I don't all, know. I, I, all I can say is, it's a good job that I send out the prizes, <laughs> <laughs> so, because that Michael Palin around the world in eighty days will be going to the person who won it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And if someone else receives it, they better not try and 
Do you know yeah. what I mean, Keeper? It should go to the winner. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. That is a very good point. Mm. So, be warned. Don't open things that weren't addressed here. Yeah. I Pandora's box. Them, <laughs> as a, there's some sort of lesson there. Yeah. What happened? All the evils of the world, wasn't it? Pretty much. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't try oh, and explain brilliant. it to uh, Carl. No, Pandora's box. Go on. Well, told not to open it, opened it, released all the evils that are in the world now. But did did the person say if you open it, loads of evil will come it's out? It's not true. It's not true. It didn't really happen. It's not like evolution. It's not the truth. But you remember that, yeah, you won't listen to some of my stuff, like goldfish and stuff. No, it's not that we don't listen to it. it it's that you would pass off how all the evils in the world got here, because on uh, Anna Nova it would be, uh, Pandora opens box! <laughs> yeah. Actually, speaking of headlines. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. Okay, look. It, it, yeah, imagine if Pilkington was on News at 10, okay? We should just explain, you cannot be bothered to read an entire news story. You get everything you need from a headline, don't you? Well, I think it's enough. I think if they did... Well, the let's news... see, let's see, let's see if this is enough. No. Let's see right. if this, oh, okay. if Trent McDonald just read this on the News at 10, it'd be short and you'd get back to the, the football or whatever. Yeah, the there we go. And here is the News at 2.15 with Carl Pilkington. Bong. Man who walks backwards around lake falls in. <laughs> Bong. Okay. Chinese woman eats dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Bong. Uh, man lives in rubbish dump for ten years. <laughs> Brilliant. Bong. Czech family says they've got a rabbit with three knobs. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Done. Sorry, can you just read a little bit more of the Czech family with three knobs? Uh. Just about a family. Not read it to yourself. <laughs> you can't go there. It's just he, about. Just... He can't read it to himself. I told him to read it to himself. We still hear it. No, he was, as I could see his lips moving. <laughs> go on. Just this fella who, uh, had three rabbits. Right, just think of this is Trevor McDonald. Yeah. Okay, carry on, Carl. Okay, oh, well, here's the news. Right, good. Brilliant. Go on. There's a fella, he's got, he's got three rabbits and that, and then, uh, <laughs> he checks them out, right? Yeah. Two of the rabbits have got two knobs each. Right. And he goes, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Sure. And they're ch throwing them around, sort of chucking up, you know, showing them around the family and stuff, yeah. saying, look at that, that's weird. Picks up the third one, it's got three. Yeah. So, they ate the two with two, because they thought, they best keep the third one, because a little bit lucky in that. Yeah. It is lucky, three knobs, yeah, yeah. Now here's the sports news, and that's, <laughs> that's how it would work. Yeah, okay, <laughs> brilliant. We'll read about the Chinese woman who eats dirt, I'm interested it's in said. that. That's it, that is the story, isn't it? What more do you need to know? It's well, I want to know a little bit more. Can you just embellish 78 it? 78-year-old Chinese woman, she says she's 78. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you wonder. Yeah. Is my theory. Uh, Carl's theory is that Chinese people don't age well. And so those Chinese people that are saying they're 112 are really only 33. Um. That's why he doesn't want to be recognised, because he doesn't want to walk out from here into Chinatown. Yeah. Uh, it just says she eats, she's been eating soil for, uh, <laughs> 70 years, she's ate about 10 tons of the stuff. And, uh, it's done her no harm. Keep, kept her grounded. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's probably alright for you, isn't it? Because well, it passes it's... through, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, they say, don't they, if you're having a kid, let it play in soil and that, cos, um... Well, that's to, to get it immune, yeah, to get yeah. it, yeah. But, but uh, lots of, like, um, things without, with, with, um, sort of, uh, birds and reptiles sometimes swallow um, soil and, uh, stones, because it grinds up stuff, breaks down cellulose for them. Doesn't do you any harm. Right then. One more fact from this book for you, Carl. Apparently, officially, the Second World War is not over. It's not actually over because there's never been an official treaty signed between Germany and Russia. So it's still going on. Interesting or not? Uh. <laughs> Not as good as the monkey one and and the, and the woman and, who eats dirt and the Pete the Great and that sure, but yeah, it is over, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it though? That's I get. That's what I mean about you annoying me with stuff that you go. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think that is interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay. There was uh, what was it I learnt? <laughs> what was it I learnt? Um, think of that yeah. as a question. Well, we're all trying to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, go on. Leonardo uh, DiCaprio. The, the painter. Da Vinci. Da Vinci. He could, uh, he could write with one hand, draw with the other at the same time. Right. Yeah, that's good. It's all right, that's it? interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's all right. Well, if you have an interesting fact for Carl Pilkington that you think he might be, uh, intrigued by, 
Email ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. What have we got coming up? UK. What have we got coming up? More education stuff. Some <laughs> good, good tunes and that. Yeah. And, uh, bit of Outcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. One, two, three, yeah. Outcast, hey ya, on XFM, 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, and over there, Carl Pilkington. Now we've got a new feature. Well, let's, I don't know if it should become a, a, a feature every week, Rick, I'm not sure it's got legs for that, um, no. but maybe in the absence of Rockbusters. Basically, I was looking through the pigeonhole, and we got a lot of stuff sent to us, a lot yeah. of junk, you know, yeah. stuff we don't really want, yeah. and a lot of people, for some reason, they send begging us- Begging letters. Begging letters, a lot of that. We get sent a lot of CDs by people, bands, artists who have not yet been signed. Maybe they've knocked something together in their bedroom. They got a band, and they just for some reason they want our feedback. They want us to sort of give them some thoughts on what they think, where they're going wrong, stuff like that. And I just thought we well, were basically I was having to clear out, and I thought why not just um, give them a little chance, you know? Yeah. Just throw them a bone, Rick. Honest, we'll, honest critique. Honest critique of some of the artists that sent us stuff. Okay, um, go these on. These bands that have not been, uh, they've not got a record contract. This is so exciting. Okay, name the three bands well, first. Well, no, we'll go through them individually, and I'll hear a little snatch, and then I'll get your opinions, both from you, Rick. I know you've been in the music business, you've got a good general knowledge of music, yeah, you've got yeah, good yeah, taste. Yeah, big time, and big also time. Carl Pilkington's views as well. Yeah. Um, we know what to think of them. So, uh, this go first on. band is called Kellerton Road. I'm sure they're very excited. As I said their name then, they probably can't believe it. They're phoning each other now, they're getting so excited. All friends are phoning them now. Yeah, Turn exactly. your phone off. They can't people in this band. Don't want to yeah. Well, okay then. Kellerton Road. Kellerton Road. Play a track from them. Go. So that's Kellerton Road, I think that's a track called uh, Secretly, and uh, looking on the back here, there's uh, six of them in the band, they all pretty much look the same, and uh, they've got the long hair, the usual sort of look. Uh, what do you make of them, Rick? All right. Yeah? Quite like yeah, that? Yeah, good, yeah. I mean, a bit generic, the chorus is a little bit simplistic, but I like good production, good, yeah, yeah. good music. Reminds you of something, maybe like the thrills, that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, good. Jukebox or junk box? What's a junk box? <laughs> It's just, I'm just trying to make it sound snappy. Jukebox don't, or junk box? Don't. Because you, you, you haven't got it. Don't okay. ever. Stick to what you're good at. Okay. Um. What, being sexy? Mm, no? just sort of watching Doctor Who and stuff. You like that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I love it. Okay, then, right, okay. what's the next one? So, well, well, let's just ask Carl Pilkington's opinion. Carl, what were your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, it's alright. Yeah? Yeah. That's it, is it? Yep. <laughs> is that why you're no longer right for the enemy? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So, what's this next one you've got for us then, Carl? Uh, Toffee. Toffee. It's called Born Depressed. <laughs> oh dear. Brilliant. Is it about you? I, qu I quite like that. Yeah? That's sort of a bit, yeah, a bit, bit glammy, bit underground. Yeah. What do you make of the name, Toffee? Not, I don't like the name. It's not great, is it? No, but I, I quite like that quite track. I like the track. I'm just looking at the CD they've made it themselves, and uh, basically the band feature on there are completely nude. Oh. What do you <laughs> Well, we know what we think of that. What do you think of that, Carl? Let's have a look, though. Have a look, then. That's no point, is it? There's quite a lot of blokes and there's one naked lady. Oh, just having a look, though, just, yeah. What are you looking at the blokes? What are you looking at? Why are you looking at the blokes? That's not. But you look at their knob. I can see. I can see by the way your eyes are looking. I'm looking at the woman's knob, though. Well, she won't be happy with that. No, no, that's a bloke. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's no. where you've been going wrong. Yeah, that's the yeah. woman. Yeah. So that's what I was looking at. That one, the woman's knob. So that's all right. Yeah. Good. So, um, uh, so Rick, uh, hit parade or shit parade? <laughs> um, uh, oh, I don't know if it's going to be. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a hit yet because I haven't got backup. But I think we're looking more about whether they get you a record know, deal. Do you think they deserve yeah. one? Uh, yeah, I thought, yeah, I like, yeah, I like, I, yeah, thumbs up for both of them. Okay, excellent, well done. all right, well done. And uh, Carl, uh, play the last one then. 
Uh, what did you make of it? Sorry, we didn't ask your opinion. We weren't interested. Um, I'd like to see him on CD UK. <laughs> 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 Just like that on the, yeah. on the CD cover. Okay, yeah. okay. Right. And this right. last uh, act, I think, is this right? Picture Centre? Yeah. Picture Centre. Favorite. You like that? Yeah, that's my favorite out of all of them. Good. There's a bit of Amy Mann in there. Mm -hmm. A little bit Cocteau Twins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, really good. good I really, like, uh, really good. Really intriguing that. Carl yeah. Pilkington. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't like it, what would you say? Um, it's weird though, isn't it? Music. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? It's like it depends what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? That's all right. If you're just having a game of crib or whatever, it's just on in the background. <laughs> uh, that's that's the thing with music. I don't think you can sort of slag any of it off. It's times, and it's it depends what mood you're in and stuff. Yeah. So. Uh, so this so is it's a pointless. pointless feature. It's a pointless. Pointless feature. feature. We're doing. Well, again, I didn't then. come up with it. No, I don't. All right, don't slag it off. Okay, we will do that again then. I was quite enjoying that, but okay. No, do you understand what I'm saying? Well, that it's not <laughs> it's not worth having an opinion about music. Uh, well, c I'm not that bothered. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, um... <laughs> Imagine if he was on the panel of Fame going to be your pop idol. Yeah. That'd be great. It would go along, and uh, Nicky Chapman go, yeah, you, you've really improved. I really like that. I don't know what you're wearing. Dr. Fox, you were hot, baby. <laughs> I loved it. Like, like, like your legs, like all your boobs and all that. <laughs> brilliant. Come to Carl. Not bothered. All right. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. Oh, well, keep it up, you know. Keep, you know. Play a record. Yeah. Oh, come on. This is my favourite. Can I change? Well, this is my favourite out of all four of them. Lena Skinner's. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Slam dunk this puppy. Jet and roll over DJ on XFM 104.9. All right? Carl, um, just an email. A question for you. Can you please let me know which school Carl went to? What school do you go to? Uh, Cessav. What? Cessav. Cessav? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, it was on Cecil Avenue. Cecil Avenue, in Manchester. Yeah. It's just, he says, I'd like to know so that I don't send my kids to the same place. <laughs> he also <laughs> says, uh, he says, P.S., does Carl look like Gollum in Lord of the Rings? Yes. He does, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, in fact, I was just putting a little bald wig on you, wasn't I? Like he needs one. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if it's you just want some of the fun and games we have when the songs are on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah did, did it hurt? Just it... a little bit. The, 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 the bit that worried me is when you said, let me just staple it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was trying to get it under your chin because it looked funnier. And he was scared. Oh, I remember it. Do you remember I did that thing with the tea towel? Have you told Steve about that? I don't think I have. It's not something I'd shout about, to be honest. Go on. Uh, went round his place. Mm-hmm. And he said, oh, before you go, I must try something. Because I couldn't get squeezing hard enough. I can't, because I'm not strong enough to hurt him anymore now, or am I? Uh, uh, I think I, I can take it a bit more than I could at the start. Yeah, so I wanted to squeeze his head more. So what did I do? So he said, uh, just hang on, I've got a tea towel. He brought a tea towel in now. I need something uh, sort of long and thin. Uh, what can I get? He's asking his girlfriend, where's that? Uh, comes in with a spatula, mm -hmm. right? He puts the tea towel on my head. Uh and manages to sort of put the spatula in and turn it round so that the tea towel is tightening on my head. Yeah. <laughs> Using little pressure, would you say, from you? Yeah, just little, it's brilliant, it was like a tourniquet, and I just turned it a little bit, and he screamed almost straight away, didn't you? It hurts. <laughs> but so, I don't, I, but, but why did you think that was good? When would you need to use that tool? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I did it on my other board mate, Rob, who was over, and he screamed as well. Cause he, he just put a tea towel around, like a little uh, bandana, just stick the wooden spoon down the back, just turn it, and it, it's even half a turn, isn't it? Mm. And it really... Hopefully children listening will be trying that on their friends. <laughs> no, no they won't, don't try that at home. Um, I've got another fact for you, Carl. 
Go Might on. be of interest to you. It's the final one. The ancient Babylonians had Can few. What? And just stop you there. <laughs> What's a Babylonian? <laughs> What do you mean, what's a Babylonian? I've never heard of one. No, but we'll think, work out, what's an Evertonian? Someone f who supports Everton. Well, or from? From Liverpool. Yeah, so what's a Babylonian? He's from Baba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well anyway, some people from Baba, ancient Baba, they didn't have any re very many doctors in those days, alright? Because they felt that illness... <laughs> Illnesses should be left to the wisdom of the public, <laughs> right? So if you were sick, okay, you were, pla you were placed in the city centre, right? And then a passerby- I'm sorry, Baba. That's sorry, Baba. And uh, a passerby who had suffered from the same ailment or who had seen it treated in the past, they would pass by, they would give them advice on how <laughs> to be cured. Do you understand? So there'd be no doctor, it's just people passing by would see, they'd say, what's wrong with you? And they'd say, well, blah, 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 I've had the same thing, here's some advice. And pedestrians were forbidden to pass such an individual without inquiring about the complaint and prescribing for it if they knew how to. So hang on, so there's someone ill. Yep. It's outside the town hall. Yeah. Uh, people walk past, go, what's up with you? They yeah. go, oh, my foot hurts, and they go, you've got to do this to get rid of yeah. that. Yeah. And were they ever right? Well, what do you mean? Were they ever right? Well, uh, how do we know? <laughs> what are you telling me? What? What have you just told me? What am I meant to take from that? You just said strangers sort of say, you've got that wrong with you. you I think he's sulking. I don't think he's ever going to take anything we tell him again because we don't, no, but I don't like understand the fact that goes, the... well, uh, um, uh, uh, it, um, uh, monkey, monkeys can do armed robberies and we go, no they can't. I don't understand what the problem is. But how is that different from telling me that a Chinese woman ate dirt? <laughs> because how is that's, that not the same sort of thing? Because that's weird. Someone sat in Trafalgar Square going, I've got a day, can I go take some Neurofen? Isn't, isn't shocking. I'm not a doctor. I've given a bit of advice. But neither is the dirt lady. She's not particularly interesting. Neither of them are particularly interesting. I'm just trying to give you an example of the same sort of drivel you feed us every week. Would you uh, sort of have tea round at her house? It's weird. The Chinese woman. Right, so it's weird. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. It's weirdness that you're interested in. See, I thought that you were actually interested in sort of learning that interesting well, sort of stuff. But if it's weird, it helps. <laughs> If it's weird, it helps. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be major news. The other day there was something about, uh, this, this fella who, I think he wanted to be an actor, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, he was trying all his life to be an actor. Couldn't get a gig anywhere, right? So when he died, he said, right, I'm gonna leave all my money to the theatre as long as that theatre uses my skull in that in that play they do with the head. Hamlet. In Hamlet. So that's that sort of news, and what? it's weird. Right. What money did he have if he's been struggling actor? <laughs> he had he had some money in that. What did he do? I don't know. Oh, that's what I'm interested in. What he did. Yeah, no, that's what me and Steve. Matter, yeah, and that's what me and Steve are interested in. What he did. How he earned his money. So, because yeah, you, you were going to educate us this week with some interesting facts. Oh, yeah, come on then. Is that it, or have you got more? Well, that that's weird. That, but that's not educational. You didn't give me his name, you didn't give me when, you didn't give me what theatre. No, but also you to take from it, do you know what I mean? If people listen and go, well, I'm a bit like that. It's like, if if you've got to have, be dead and have your skull on stage, that isn't the job for you. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. If it takes that much, c give it up, do something else. Right? Uh, what else have I taught you? I don't know. You haven't taught us, you've, uh, you've never taught me anything. See, we'll just have to sort of... What, agree to disagree? Right. I don't know what you can sort of learn from this. Go on then. Uh, seven up, the drink. Yeah. Right. This is, we are, we're actually on air now, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, this is right, it. Right, okay. This, is this, it, this, this is a radio show yep. that we're paid Forget for. That, then. Forget No, come no. on, no, come on, seven up. <sighs> it's not really, not it's important. It's not interesting, no, it's not interesting or important. Go on, no, come yeah. on then. Come the, on. Little, the little red dot, that's... Above the seven on the can, do you know, it says seven yeah, up and the little yeah, red dot. Yeah. That red dot's there because the creator of it uh, was an albino and he had red eyes. And he had that little thing there, there's his little trademark. Is that true? It's true. That's quite interesting. Right then. So mm. that's what I'm saying. It's not that important, but it's interesting. If it's true, that's interesting. It isn't, it's true and it's interesting. Okay, that's good. You, Any know, more? you know, Coke used to contain um, real cocaine. So well, they, they used to be medicines, didn't they? Tonics, yeah. No, they were medicines. I read that, um, 
tomato ketchup and Coca-Cola started off as medicines. Probably not a medicine, probably more of a tonic, because it probably a pick, pick me up, wasn't it? If I had coke in it and caffeine and sugar, and same as ketchup, probably lots of vitamin C and lots of sugar, it was probably more of a tonic. It wasn't really a medicine. They didn't say, cancer, have this on your chips. It's an HP. It wasn't a medicine, it was... Well, it was, kind of. All right, okay, let's agree to disagree on that particular one. Okay, all right, yeah. Um, Is that it, Carl? What else? You've, 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 you've given us a seven-up thing, okay. Uh, I've told you about the goldfish. Not really, but yeah. Uh... You didn't tell us anything about goldfish. This is your fact, right? You know what? Goldfish might might have longer memories than some people think. <laughs> That's not a fact. That, that, under no circumstances, would imagine, imagine Magnus Magnusson saying, uh, <laughs> what animals might have longer <laughs> memories than most people think? This is goldfish, correct? <laughs> Imagine that as a question. How is that a fact? If you ever have children, are you going to educate them with this kind of drivel? Is this how you're going to raise your kids? So their minds just pump that, full that'd of That'd be rubbish? my job. I'd keep them interested with stuff like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Suzanne does the proper stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so you agree there is some proper stuff? Yeah, but I wouldn't make him do it. I'd just sort of leave the book there. And then if he read it, I'd go, that's good, that he was... What book would you think? What, the 50th, most <laughs> freakiest people ever to be born? Give him that to start with. <laughs> would you t what, what, would, what would you tell me your favourite was? The little fella who was playing the keyboard? That or the three-legged fella. <laughs> yeah, okay. So he's learnt that. That's the first day at school. What, what would you teach him the second day at school? I don't know, because it, uh, it, it, why, why do owls have to turn 180 degrees to look the other way? Because they've got big eyes. Yeah, and what's that mean? What do you mean, what's can it I, mean? Can I just... I don't think you should have children. <laughs> well, right. Suzanne's always saying, you know, let's, you know, she'd... she'd like to hear tiny feet running round the flat. Stuff. Yeah. I just said, let's get a let's get a little midget cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> right, haven't got long. We better give the winner. We got monkey news coming up. We haven't really got any monkey news. What do you mean? <laughs> what do there's, you mean? There's nothing going on. Seriously. Don't talk. What do the you mean? The last few weeks have been telling you. No, no, no. I right, right. This really annoys me. When you say there's something going on because you call it monkey news, but it's not yeah. monkey news. You have stories, uh, dubious well, stories. Of a shut up a minute about chimps. It's always chimps, which annoys me. You call it monkey because they're apes, right? And. It's often from the 18th century, mm -hmm. so it's not news anyway. So don't tell me there's no monkey no, news but what I'm this week. Is if there's monkey news worth doing, I'll know about it. <laughs> and there isn't anything, right. so let's leave. Right, it. okay, you are going to give me some monkey news. Well, me, or, okay, right, but I tell you, I'm telling you, you are going to give me some monkey news, or we're not leaving. Right, well, my mum sent me some. Right? right. I got a little letter from her doing the usual sort of stuff, telling me what she'd been up to and that. Uh, it was a little thing about. Uh, somewhere in Lincolnshire or something. Right, good. To do a bit of, uh, do a bit of monkey throwing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, what do you mean? Because some fella got attacked by one once, and sort of to remember him, on this certain day they go, oh, it was today, wasn't it? And that fella got attacked by a little monkey and that. And the, uh, something about chucking monkeys about. That's horrible. I don't know if they're real, I think it's just like to remember. All right. But that's that's the only sort of stuff that's knocking about out there. <laughs> but it's not. That one, that's not. I've got monkey my mum and dad on it, looking all the time. For stuff. <laughs> there must be more monkey news than that. There isn't nothing. Go I mean, there's there's bits and pieces. There was a bit about Donna Rare, how when she has a kid, she's going to let a gorilla look after it for a week or something. But apart from that, it's, it's dead out true. there. That's Well, I don't know what that means. She's uh. Well, that's it. Apparently, well, it's not uh, true. She's not going to let a gorilla look after a no, child. No, it is. Apparently, a, a fella works with them or something. And, uh... This is rubbish! It's not rubbish. How can she let a gorilla look after a baby for a week? Well, forget it. So, have you ever heard her speak? <laughs> <laughs> can I just give you a little fact here? Someone's emailed in for you, Carl. They've sent an interesting fact for you. I think you're going to be interested in this. Don't read it on the email. Let me read it for you. I think you'll be excited. An interesting fact from Carl. That's from Toby. He says, Attila the Hun punished some fella who annoyed him by cutting off his arms and legs you'll love this, and stitching his arms back where his legs should be, <laughs> and vice versa. <laughs> Look at his face. Look at the little smile that's just cracked on his lips. That is the kind of fact you've been waiting for all day, isn't it? So go on, again, so... so Attila the Hun, right, some guy he didn't like, he cut off his arms and his legs, and he stitched his legs on where his arms should be, and his arms where his legs should be. 
Look at him looking at his body trying to picture it. Yeah. The, the, I, 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 I can't, I'll let, I'll let it sink in for a little while, then I'll ruin it for him. Carl, what are you thinking? I'm just picturing it. Right, he would have died. It would have been tokenistic. There's no way that person could have lived through it. Mm. So, it was just for, to the Hun's fun. He probably put him on, on a stick out, outside his gate or something. There's no way in those days that he could have gone through complete limb amputation and... So would he have wore a jumper for pants? Who's <laughs> 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 the winner of the competition? From Walthamstow, it's Joe Ogden. Well done, Joe. You got the correct answer, which was what? The fellow with two heads, number 50. Number 50. Is that it? Are we off? Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cheers. Uh, more of the same drivel next week. Maybe. Bye. Bye.